welcome to our channel inquisitive engineer on youtube today we are going to start a new lecture series or you may call it even a continuation of our previous lecture series on design of rcc multi-story building in etaps and we will start or continue that lecture series today and we will begin with the connection design for the design of connection we will use idea statica software we have one video lecture on our channel in YouTube in which we discuss about installing the IDEA Statica plugin in ETAPS and how to import the ETAPS data for steel connection design to IDEA Statica. Today we will look at one sample connection design from one of our sample models in ETAPS and we will continue this connection design series in our further video lectures. So we discussed about what IDEA Statica is capable of in our previous lecture also. There we discussed that we use this software for steel connection design, member analysis and different code checking of concrete details. And we will perform one such steel connection design today. So I have one of my ETAPS model open here. This is a three storied RCC structure and this building has already been analyzed and designed here. So today we will begin with the design of a connection of primary beam and secondary beam here. I have chosen this sample joint here. I have selected the two members. This is the secondary beam and this is the primary beam and we are going to design this connection today. So our primary beam is a ISEMB 250 section and our secondary beam is a channel section of size 125 mm. We will look at the forces acting on this connection by selecting a random load combination and we will use that data in IDEA Statica to perform our connection design. So our, ball, our building has already been run and analyzed. Let us see the frame element forces from this option here. For example, we are choosing this combination. We will leave its ATGs as it is and we will see this CR22 forces that is coming onto this beam element here. Left click on OK. You will see that the CR coming in this secondary beam is minus 18.1197 kN. Let's say minus 18.12. So what we generally do during the modeling of these primary and secondary beams is that we will release the moment at these connections. So releasing the moment means now this primary beam will only transfer the shear forces from this secondary beam. So we only need to use this value of load in our IDEA Statica model for the design of this connection. And this connection should be able to transmit this value minus 18.12 kN value of shear force. So we will design one such connection which is able to transmit this force here. Just remember the value minus 18.12 kN. So I have IDEA Statica open here. I will click on this connection. Clicking on this connection will display us a new form here. So this is the IDEA Statica workflow. First, we have to select the class of connection that we will be designing. There are different classes such as this is the connection of a column to a beam. We have connection of a primary beam to a secondary beam. We have connection of these various elements at one separate place or one single place. We also have may have the connection of the base plate and then we may have some other complex connections also. So our class is the second class here. We are going to design a connection for a primary beam and a secondary beam. This is the topology that we will be using for now and we are going to do a shear connection. So in this third tab here, design, there are some moment connection and there are some shear connection diagrams given here. So let me choose this second type of shear connection. This is a fin plate connection. So to know about fin plate, I have just opened an image here from Google image. You can see that this fin plate connection uses a plate to connect these two members here. Okay, let's not let's look at another image here. 
okay we will look at this about fin plate in our idea static model itself so i'm going to choose this design type here cr connection it is a cr connection so and the fourth is we have to choose the parameters here you can give the name of your project here we will call this fin fin plate connection design you can give the description to your project name the steel grade that we will be using is 250 newton per mm square grade that is the mild steel bolt assembly let us choose bolt assembly by clicking on this arrow is we will be using uh, bolts of grade 4.8 and 12 mm diameter bolts so m12 4.8 and then click on ok the concrete grade we won't be needing now because we are not going to use any concrete element so i will leave this as it is m25 and the design code that we will be using is the indian code here if you click on this arrow different euro code american code canadian code or chinese code appears here you can select your preferred code of practice currently i will be using the indian code of practice here and after choosing all these parameters then left click on create project So this is our first video on the design of connection in IDI Statica. We are doing a very simple connection design here. The main objective is one is to know, study and discuss the connection design and also to know the workflow process. That means what are the steps involved in designing a connection using this IDI Statica software. So now this diagram has appeared here. There are some description on this right hand side and you have these ribbons in, at the top. For example, here is design ribbon, check ribbon, report materials. We will be in this design ribbon for now. So here are the or here is the type of connection that you have chosen. If you click on this cube here, then you can rotate your element that is shown in this diagram here. So we said that it is a fin plate connection. This plate that is connecting these two members, it is a fin plate. Remember that this fin plate is connecting our member B1 to our member B. You can see here members. If you select this B member, then your this B member is selected. If you click on B1, your B1 member is selected. So our B1 member is being connected to the B member using this fin plate. And this fin plate is being connected to B1 with the help of these two bolts, whereas the fin plate and this element B1 is being connected to this element B using weld here. So we have both bolts and weld here. So let's select on this B member here. This means our main member, the bearing member on which our element B1 is connected. So this is the bearing member or the primary beam. So our primary beam is ISMB 250 section. So whenever you select anything here, then the corresponding properties appear on this right hand side i have selected the member b here so this cross section i am going to change and use the cross section that is actually present in our model so click on this plus sign to add new our beam member is a i section so choose this i section and then for the geometry or shape select a different element here by clicking on this three dot So we are using ISMB sections here. Okay, so, okay, let me just cancel this. So if you click on this, you will be given with edit parameters. If you click on this add new, uh, if you click on this add new, look. if you look here, different options are given here. You can have different rolled sections, some composite sections or composed sections. You can have cold formed steel sections also, and you can also design for timber sections. If I go to my rolled section here and select the I section type, uh, let me, I think we have selected a different code of practice here so that our Indian sections, rule sections are not being displayed here. So let me just click and cancel.
so we mistakenly selected Hong Kong code so our standard rule sections were not being displayed here so I have corrected it and now we can continue so let me select this our main bearing member which is the B member the B member that we have used in our structure is ISMB 250 mm section so after you selected the B member here its corresponding properties are displayed on this right hand side table so under this properties cross section click on this add new sign and then you have different options here as we discussed before we are going to use a rolled section of I section so the shape you can change here the option is already given here ISMB 250 if you click on this three dot then you will be presented with different ISMB sections here ISMB 250 is our required section so select it and then left click on OK and again click on OK okay now your main beam has changed to the required property similarly do the same for this secondary beam which is our connected member so you can either select this member by clicking on this beam itself or you can click on b1 here do similar to what you have done for the main beam under this properties section click on this add new tab for cross section select this channel section here and under this geometry change the shape to ISMC 125 we have used a medium channel section of 125 so select this ISMC 125 and left click on OK and again click on OK okay now these two members have been corrected based on what we have used in our structure now we will modify some properties for these fin plates the position of the secondary beam and the number and sizes of our bolts and the size of our weld here remember that this fin plate connects member using a connecting plate that is displayed here this blue element is our connecting plate and this connecting plate mostly transfers shear loads to the flanger wave of another member so you can see that we are connecting our element b1 to the wave of our main beam so the shear forces coming onto this element b1 are being transferred to the wave of our primary beam you can see here these bolts are out of position so we will correct this all first of all if you click here you can see the side view here so let me just unselect this or let me do this if you see the side view here you can see that our this secondary beam is connected somewhere in the middle to this primary beam suppose that we want to make this secondary beam flush with the primary beam that means we want our top edge of the secondary beam in line with the top edge of this primary beam so we will have to shift the position of this secondary beam here to do that the select the secondary beam and under this position go to the offset ez since our vertical direction is z we have to change this offset EZ distance in millimeter. If you know the actual depth of our primary beam and secondary beam here, then you can use the required value of offset here, or you may do some trials to get the required position of these two members. For example, if I increase the offset to 60 mm, you can see that now our two these two members are almost in line here. If I do this 61, it is a shifted a little bit upward. And if I do this 61.5, still you can see that there is some gap between these two members. So let's use it as 62.5. Now these two members seem to be in the same line. You can also use out the geometrical properties of these two beams to know the value of required offset. So now we have made these two members in line here. If you rotate this cube element here, your whole element will be rotated. Now let's change the properties of this fin plate, including the weld size and bolt here. So you can either click on this FP1, which represents our fin plate, or you may even click on this element here to display these properties about the fin plate. So there are different options to insert the values or to select the different elements for this fin plate and we will go through these options one by one first is the member here so this member means 
we have to select the member that is to be connected using the fin plate to our main bearing member. So remember there are two things here or two elements here. One is the B1 element which we will call member during this design process and this main beam to which our member is connected we will call that bearing surface or our connected to member. So our member is B1 that means we are connecting this B1 to our main beam using the fin plate. The member part is wave. We are connecting the wave of the secondary beam to the wave of the primary beam and connected to means B1 is connected to the B member that is this main beam here. The material we are using is mild steel. So we chose this default value at the very beginning of our design section. So this value has come up here mild steel. Now you have to insert the thickness of the fin plate here. You can start with the trial section and if your design fails then you may increase the thickness. For example, let us start the thickness of this fin plate is 8 mm. So I will reduce this value to 8 mm. The location of this fin plate I can either be rear or front. If you choose this front here, you can see that your fin plate has gone to the another side, the front side. So I will use the rear option here. I want to construct our fin plate in this rear side here. The connection type is bolted. That means we want the secondary beam that is used here to be connected to this fin plate using bolts. If you choose the welded option here, you see that the bolt has vanished here. But we want to use the bolts here. We will use bolts to connect this plate to our secondary beam or this channel section. So connection type I will use is bolted. Now let us see what this gap means here. If you don't know what anything means here, just use a different value instead of these default values that are given here and see the change in the diagram that corresponding to that change in these values. For example, if I change the value of gap to 10 to 30 mm, then you can see that the size of your fin plate has changed here. So this gap means the gap of our fin plate Sorry, if you let us see the side view here. Let's see here, this 30 value that you have used as gap here, this is the gap between the primary beam and the secondary beam. You can see this large gap, which is equal to a value of 30 mm. So we won't be needing this big gap here. We may just use a gap of 5 mm. Then this has now, this gap has now decreased and the two members have come closer together. Dimensions we will use in terms of central center line here. Let's not change this option. Now we have overlap here. This overlap is given as 90. If you search this 90 value here, you can see that this 90 mm is the actually the length or width, whatever you want to call the dimension of this wave plate here. So overlap, what this software is trying to tell is that this overlap means the overlap distance between our member B1 and our fin plate. So you can decrease the size of your fin plate by decreasing this overlap. So let me use here 70 for now. You can see the size of the fin plate has decreased here. And finally you have this top and bottom. This top means this is the offset of top is a fin plate. That means this top is a fin plate from the top is of cross section of member. So the distance between the top edge of our member B1, this is here, to the top edge of our fin plate, we call this top. If I decrease this value to minus 10, you can see that our fin plate is now nearer to the top edge of our member. So let me decrease this to minus 20. Let me still decrease this to minus 30. And similarly, bottom is also, let me use minus 30. Okay, now this is the actual width of our fin plate that we are using. This notch means this gap that you can see between the two members here. If you remove this notch, unselect this notch, then our notch disappears. Let us use notch here and notch offset we will use 10 mm. So now we have given different properties to our fin plate. Now we will change the properties relating to bolts. 
So we are using 4.6 grade bolt of 12 mm diameter. This is the default patio that we selected at the very beginning. We will use the same here. Now we have this transverse and longitudinal distance here. So longitudinal distance has been given at zero. So if you use some value 40 mm here, then you can see that two rows of bolts are created. Or you can say that these two columns of bolt have been created. Since this is a random connection, we will first try with only two bolts. And then if our bolts are failing in the capacity, then we will increase the number of bolt. So to decrease the number of columns of bolt, let us use this longitudinal distance as zero here. And then transverse distance, let us decrease this transverse distance to 30. Then you can see that these two bolts have come nearer. So we want all of this bolt to be within this fin plate, not outside of this fin plate. So we will decrease the transverse distance to 20 mm. Again, decrease this transverse distance to 15 mm. Now our connection seems to be okay here. And shear force transfer, we are doing in tension or shear interaction. And finally, change the properties for this weld. The weld material is the same as that for our steel, that is 250 Newton per mm square. We will be using double fillet weld here. You can select different options such as front side fillet weld, back side fillet weld, double fillet weld, butt weld, or no weld at all. We will be using double weld, double fillet weld. And the size of our weld, we will select as 3 mm. That is the throat thickness of our weld. So these are the different input parameters that we have used for your fin plate, for your bolts, weld, and for your connecting and connected members. Now one thing left to apply on our design part is to give the load here. So if you select this load operation LE1, you can see that currently a shear force of minus 40 kN is being applied to our structure here. So since this is our shear connection, the only value of load that we want to give to our software is the shear force acting on our secondary beam. And if you remember, during while looking at our ETAPS model, we selected a random load combination and for that load combination, our shear force came out to be minus 18.12 kN. So we will be using the same value of shear force for this member here also. You can update the value of that load by selecting on this load effects. Now, here are different values of load that can be given to our B1 member. For example, the axial force, the shear force, the moment. We will only change the value of Vz to minus 18.12 kN. Now you can see that the value also has been changed here. So this is about the modeling and load application for our plate. Now we want to design this connection or design this fin plate. To design this, what we will do is, under this design tab, we have a ribbon here and we have an option called calculate. So this calculate option will run nonlinear analysis for stress and strain and check the capacity of our joint. So let's click on this calculate. Our connection is being designed here. So our analysis and design is complete here. Different results are displayed. You can see here analysis, plates, bolt, welding, and buckling. These results have been displayed here. Now we will see about the details of these results, what are displayed and what this result means. You can also do this calculation part by going to this check ribbon here. After once you have calculated by using this calculate option under this design type, now we will go to this check tab here. And now if you see on your right hand side here, the check results have been published for plates, bold and welds. Let us see one by one what results are given here. First under this analysis tab, the status of analysis is that the loads have been applied 100% and our analysis is complete. The status is complete here. Under these plate tabs, the check of members and steel plates for extreme load effect have been given. So 
The fin plate also have been checked for different load effects and our members, this primary beam and secondary beam have been also checked for different load effects. If you see here, these first three rows, these are the check results for our primary beam. Different name have been given for our primary beam. For example, these two thing is about the flange and this is the check or analysis result for the wave of our primary beam. Similarly, our fourth row and fifth row are the analysis results for the flanges of our secondary beam. That means this channel section. And the second last row is the analysis result for our wave of our channel section. And finally, the last row which represents FA1 is the analysis result for our fin plate. So for analysis result, this table has been displayed for different plate elements. The material is given here. The design yield strength, the thickness of these materials, the load effect for which this analysis is being done, and then maximal equivalent stress, the plastic strain, and the contact stress have been calculated and analyzed here. So this thickness of plate, you can also know which element means, with this item means which element by even looking at the thickness. This 12.5 is the thickness of the flanges of our primary beam. 6.9 is the thickness of the wave of our primary beam. 8.2 is the thickness of flanges of our channel section or secondary beam. 5.3 mm is the thickness of the wave of our secondary beam. And 8 mm is the thickness which we used in the while inputting our design parameters for our fin plate. So different equivalent stress has been calculated, the plastic strain has been calculated and the maximal contact stress has been calculated. Now if you compare this table and the results that is displayed here, the analysis is complete 100% so it's okay. And for our plates, this 1.2 means this is the maximum plastic strain. If you look at this second last column here, you can see that the maximum plastic strain in this column is 1.2. <coughs> Sorry. And this 1.2 is less than the allowed plastic strain of 5%. So it's okay. Here. So this is about the analysis result that is being displayed here. Similarly, if you check your analysis result for bolts, you can see that the result have been published here or displayed here for two bolts that we have used B1 and B2. So B1 is our upper bolt and B2 is our lower bolt. The loads we have applied only one load here LE1. So the bolts have also been analyzed for this load LE1. And now for bolt effects, different load effects have been displayed here. For example, the factor tensile force coming onto our bolts, the shear force, the design bearing capacity of our bolts, this is the utilization of our bolt capacity in tension, utilization of our bolt capacity in shear, and the utilization in combined tension and shear. Remember this utilization ratio, this all of these last three columns are displayed as percentage. And the, this utilization percentage should always be less than 100%. So if you look here, in tension, if you compare this 60.2 and 56.6, you can see that the 60% capacity of bolt 1 is being utilized and 56.6% capacity of bolt 2 is being utilized in tension. So this 60.2 is less than 100 is displayed here. So our bolts have also been checked and the check results are okay or conform to our code of practice. Similarly, if you look at the result for our weld, the same information are dis is displayed here. For example, the throat thickness of our fillet weld, the length of our weld, the weld element length. This weld has also been analyzed for the effect of load LE1 and finally the equivalent stress in the weld. Now you can see that our the capacity of our weld is being utilized almost 100% 98.5. So if you increase the throat thickness of your fillet weld to make it even more safer you may increase the thickness of the fillet weld and in that case if you increase the thickness then a less capacity of that weld strength will be utilized and this value of 98.5 will decrease. So this is about the different analysis results and the results that are displayed by our software here. You may even check for different things such as the equivalent stress, 
if you see under this check tab here in this ribbon here you can check for equivalent stress you can see a stress diagram that is being displayed here based on the value of stresses that may come onto your connection here you can see this red portion where the maximum equivalent stress is acting similarly you can check for plastic strain and you can check for this deformed shape so if you click on this deformed shape here also click on this mesh option here you can see how your joint deforms under the action of this shear force here this is somewhat an enlarged diagram the actual deformation may not be this big that means this is uh, we have increased the scale of our deformation here so you can see the type of deformation or the pattern of deformation that may appear in our connection here on the application of this shear force in this shear connection so these are the different checks or different results that can be obtained from our connection design and finally idea statica also provides an option for generating the reports to do that go under this report tab you can select different options here based on what you want to include in that report for example relating to model for example if i use the last option here this report will also display the picture of user defined sections also the pictures from the gallery for the drawing result I have selected these two options here. First, it will display the overall results in a traffic light mode and then the equivalent stress contours. If you want to display the bill of materials also, you may select either the table of items for all operations or the table of items and detailed drawings. I will check this option here. I also want the report to do cost estimation for me. So I will check this option here, the table of cost estimation values. I want the report to display the formulas that are used here. And that formulas I want to display in the table. I want explanation in detail also. And then I want picture colors also. So after selecting the required items that you want to include in your report, if you click on refresh here, a new report will be generated, including all the items that you have selected. For example, if you give your project name, number, author, and description, this information will also be updated here our design code is is the material we have used is mild steel so our project name we gave is fin plate connection design the same name is displayed here we have beam and column details that means the details of our connecting members we have information regarding the cross section bolts load effects and then we have the check here this is the summary of our check which was displayed on this left hand side we have the check results for our plates the symbol explanations have been given here different diagrams have been given here for strain check and others we have the results for our bolts and we have the explanation of symbols and finally we have the detailed result for the our bolts here you can see that for bolt b1 tension resistance check has been done according to this clause of our is code 800 similarly shear resistance check bearing resistance check and interaction of tension and shear check have all been performed there and a detailed report regarding all the values that have been generated in this design checks have also been given here similarly we have the weld resistance check the buckling analysis was not calculated so we have no buckling analysis here and finally after our design results we have cost estimation for our steel weld bolt Old drilling and cost summary here and we have the bill of materials for our connection design and finally we have the drawing here this is the diagram of our fin plate and this is the diagram of our second remember you can see the notch here that we created so this is the detailed report that idea statica generates for us so one of the very useful software that helps us in the design of connections and other code checking of results is idea statica if you want to do connection or if you wish to do connection design on your own then it can be a very complex process but this software simplifies that process to a very greater extent so in our further videos on this design lecture series we will come up with more connection design videos of this type 
and we will even look at other features of this idea statica software in detail also so i would like to end today's lecture video here we'll meet again soon till then stay safe and thank you